Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. I want to make this video just to summarize literally what I just learned about an hour ago from Alex Ramosi watching his content strategy video, which is about 50 minutes long. And I literally took a bunch of notes, wrote it down on this sheet. So please do not expect me to be an expert on this. All I'm trying to do is sh share some value with you guys. So hopefully this is going to bring some value to you and you can learn just like I did. So this is how he started, right? He had a successful business, right? And then he started helping others create successful businesses. He didn't want to be famous, surprisingly, but he saw the impact that content had, right, on businesses and people making money. So what he realized was that the videos that he was creating when he started creating content, the ones that actually performed the best weren't the ones with top-notch quality or like background you know, lighting and stuff like that, but it was the ones with actual better content. So the quote he, or the thing he said was that content matters the most, not the rapper. He has, he had a interview with Cardone, right? Uh, Grant Cardone. And what he learned was that volume is key. The biggest thing is volume and people aren't doing enough of it a lot of times, even though they're doing the right thing. So Alex decided to start putting out way more content. He went from doing seven videos a week to 80 times per week. And so basically before he really made that shift in his business, his, uh, you know, audience looked something like this, right? The growth was stagnant. And then as soon as he did that, they literally, um, went crazy. They got crazy results in literally uh, six months. So they will, they were able to, uh, add 300,000 YouTube subscribers, 7,000 followers on LinkedIn, 350,000 on TikTok, 150K buyers on his Amazon book, 350,000 followers on Instagram, 100K on Twitter, and 400K downloads a month for the podcast. So literally, he grew a 1 million person audience within six months. So what he was doing for a long time in six months, he basically exponentially increased his audience. So here's the net traffic result that he got. 90,000 monthly website visits, 180K followers, subscribers to 1.2 million across all platforms. Impressive. Uh, or I'm sorry, this is 180,000 on YouTube to 1.2 million on YouTube. Impressions was, I mean, he didn't really track it before. It went to 80 million per month which is crazy. If you spent, <laughs> if you spent money on that type of reach, you would be spending about $2 million per month on ad spend. And he did it for free. So just creating videos. The business result was 400 companies applied to his company acquisition.com uh, for business growth. The revenue result was 7 million a month through to 13 million a month. So he next section was talking about how and how much basically what they were doing and how are they were doing it um, as far as creating content, why their content started doing really well. So $20,000 per month was how much he was spending on basically editors for all the platforms. But the point is you can do it yourself. The time allocation he did was like 93% of his time went on actually his business versus 7% on content. So he didn't spend that much time during his daily hours. On content it was just one time twice you know during the month where he really allocates time two days a month uh, one hour a week is basically the four things he was doing daily mind dumps so basically writing down the content ideas on Twitter four hours weekly Twitter review which he was just looking at basically all the tweets that were performing well and which ones he would turn into actual content which I'll talk about one day a month was creating 50 shorts literally in one day. So he would change his shirt ten, uh, every 10 videos. And then the last thing was uh, he would create four to eight YouTube videos one day a month. So he was spending two days on just like creating content. The rest of the time was just thinking of content and so on. So here's his content creation model. This is the screenshot from the video. Number one was uh, test. Record, then number two, three was inject, contextualize, and distribute. So testing came down to posting his content on Twitter, seeing what 
type of like responses and reach he was getting with that tweet, then he would basically turn that tweet into long form and short form. The threads were turned into long form videos and the shorts became, or the tweets became short form. Number two was recording both long form and short form content. So long form went, long form content went more into depth versus short form for width. Basically long form, you could talk about way more details. Short form was kind of short, concise to the point, and you could reach a, a wider audience. The viral content hack he talked about in the video was what he got from Mr. Beast, which was the CTR times watch time, which is click through rate. Basically, all we're trying to do is get people to click on your video and watch it as long as possible. And that's what creates viral videos. Here's the long form blueprint and short form blueprint blueprint that he had, which is number one hook or a question. Then he talked about a story. The framework was next and then the explanation. And then he would just repeat this cycle uh, if he needed to do a longer video. The short form content was at first having the hook and then the hammer slash tweet, which a lot of times you'll see in Alex's videos, he puts a tweet on the screen and basically the topic he's going to talk about and then the example and explanation. Basically, this is what it looks like, right? Tweet, he, he tweeted the uh, title for one of his YouTube uh, videos that he was going to create or potentially create, performed very well. So he made that video. Then the shorts, basically same thing. Number three was injecting uh, calls to action. So he actually didn't really do this before. And until he implemented this, he grew his podcast from 20,000 a month to, you know, to uh, downloads 20,000 per month to 400,000 per month uh, in six months. So in two years, he grew such a like small, small following versus like six months in such a shorter period of, period of time, he was able to grow way faster just from implementing call to action or calls to action. So having call to actions was what allowed him to do that. These are a couple of examples that he was talking about in the video. And basically this is just the structure for one, for example, a podcast was, you know, in, in the beginning talking about other channels, like I guess subscribing or following his Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is. And then uh, mentioning a lead magnet in the middle of the podcast for people to go to maybe funnel the attention and then selling the lower ticket basically at the end of the podcast. Um, number four was contextualizing. So each platform has its own avatar and audience. Basically the same video you're going to post on, you know, Instagram might not look the same on TikTok, right? So adjusting the style of your video to the platform was what he was talking about. Basically taking one video, making it, you know, adjust it to every platform. So for example, this is what it looks like on Instagram. This is what it will look, this is what it would look like on TikTok, and then this is on YouTube Shorts. That way you're going to get better reach because a lot of times if you just post the same video across all platforms, you're missing out on a much larger reach that you could have gotten if you just adjust the style of the video. Five is distributing. So he realized that input equals output. So he went from posting seven times a week to 80 times a week, and that basically 10x his output because his input went 10x, right? Now here's the observations. The real reason why Alex actually grew so much. He's arguing that, look, I didn't grow mainly because of all this, all this stuff up here. This is not the reason why I really grew is basically what he's saying. Because look, everybody asks the question, why should I listen to you? before any, any time that somebody watches a video. For example, you probably didn't ask that question when you started watching this video, right? You're just listening to what Alex is preaching over here. But uh, why should somebody watch your video, right? Answer that question before creating content. Because look, how would you feel or how would you treat the information that I'm presenting to you that Alex presented? If Alex created this same presentation for content with only an audience of a thousand total people on social media. How would you respond to this type of information? You probably wouldn't even click on the video. 
right? <laughs> or at least my video. <laughs> but um, many people make content from a weak frame. So the real reason Alex's audience grew so much was because they have evidence to support what they're saying. Alex actually built out multiple companies before talking about building a company, right? Four different or three different companies he built before actually talking about it. So how should you start creating content if you haven't done the stuff first? There's two angles that he brings up in the video, which is how to versus how we. How to is like, you should do this versus how we is like, look, I did this, you can apply this yourself or apply the information yourself. Quote, Alex's uh, crazy content creation model is three steps, right? Do things, step two, talk about what you did. And then step three, do bigger things. Point is, before talking about something, you should do it first. Then once you talk about it, you can start doing even bigger things and then you can talk more. So an angle example would be, here's what you should do, which is wrong if you haven't done it before, versus here's what I did. Because here's what I did is the angle of like, you're just providing value. You're just like, hey, for example, in this video, I didn't say you guys should do this. I'm just saying, look, this is what I learned and here's what Alex presents, apply it to your own life or business, correct? So that's the right way to do it. All these people uh, on the screen, which I screenshot in this video, they all did not need a following. They all actually achieved something big before talking. And so they really don't need an audience. They don't need the following. They already did the doing. And see, the thing is, you won't be respected as an authority on business until you achieve me mega success. So what you can do is become a niche specific authority. Basically, what you can do is become a specific authority in, you know, fitness or I don't know, something else. But for example, Alex became uh, an expert in fitness. He went from, you know, looking, I don't know what he looked like before, but basically looking really good physically, right? This guy trained hard and he learned what was working, what wasn't working. And so that helped him uh, to leverage to go to the next level, which is building the business. When he built the business, he was able to then talk about building the business because he already built it. And then he helped others build businesses. And see, Alex says that too many people have never done anything. They tell other people what to do and then repurpose other people's videos and make it worse. Again, it comes down to the how I versus how to. Right? At first, you know, he wasn't getting crazy reach with his, you know, book, Gym Launch. But after he started accomplishing things, doing things, providing value to the public or to the, you know, to his audience, and he actually started growing, I mean, it scaled like crazy, right? With his 100 million offers book. I mean, the difference is huge. The point is, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to achieve a mega following from the start, but when you accomplish things, that's going to set you up for success in the future. It's kind of like Warren Buffett can give you the most basic financial or financial advice, you know, that a high school teacher can give you, but he's going to have way more authority and influence versus the high school teacher. Questions why? Well, the high school teacher forgot to build Berkshire Hathaway, <laughs> right? So how can you be so confident in your videos? Here's four things he mentioned. Have support or evidence behind what you're talking about. Talk about the things you actually did and then just speak the facts because that's undeniable. Whenever you start talking about things you did, you don't really, you don't have to prove it. You did it. You don't, you don't need anything backing it up. All your, you, you, you did something, you have proof. You don't need anything else to prove you otherwise. So stop pretending doing stuff. Okay. Now, persuasion was the next topic he talked about, which is, you know, having better persuasion in your videos. One way to be a lot more trustworthy and have more authority is becoming an expert in a certain thing versus everything. For example, like watch if a person said, I'm an expert in having an amazing life, creating a perfect marriage, physical training and starting a business, buying crypto, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or if somebody said, I'm not an expert in having, you know, 
this, 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 but I'm an expert on physical training. Which one's going to be more believable? The first or the second? Obviously the second. And that's just like psychology. So here was Alex. This is what like Alex's evolution looked like, right? At first he started fitness for himself. Then he built his own business that helped others, you know, with fitness. Then he built his portfolio, you know, growing other people's businesses and growing multiple businesses of his and so on. So you get better over time after doing things. Here's the equation of business. Volume times time equals skill, right? The more reps, repetitions and things you do over a period of time is going to build up your skill. And that's how you become good at something. Next thing was talking about um, how you should always give away secrets in your videos, but sell the impl implementation. The problem is everyone just does not give away anything. They try to keep everything to themselves and then try to sell the secrets, which just doesn't work. The best way to do it, even according to Tony Robbins, is basically give away so much uh, of what you know that it actually hurts. It actually hurts you and it actually makes you question whether you should do it or not because people are just going to take the information and leave. So what he's saying is, you know, most people don't apply the thing anyways. People always need help to do the thing. So most of the time, even if you give away the, the secret sauce, nobody's actually going to go and like apply it, unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately. Um, so make your free materials better than everyone else's paid content. Because if you do this, people are all going to be going to you because look, you're giving free stuff that's better than somebody else's paid stuff. So obviously you're going to grow your audience way more than any, any of your other competitors. The next thing was uh, talking about what you really know, which is kind of going back to the other points, but basically talking about your specialty versus, you know, going broad and talking general about things you're not actually specialized in. And then uh, also he was talking about, you know, pitching in your videos versus like wanting uh, for the or waiting for the ask. Basically, what he was saying was the longer like you delay asking for something from your audience or from the person the more you can ask for later on. It's basically selling without selling. The longer you delay the asking, the more you will compound goodwill over time because if you're not asking for anything, your goodwill compounds. But if you're constantly asking for things, your goodwill does not build up. So if you keep giving to people, you basically won't even have to ask because they'll come back to you asking. Compounding that goodwill will allow you to build a much bigger audience and increase your revenue substantially the longer you wait instead of trying to get the money fast. The equation he gives is, look, give, 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 right, equals get. The big problem on why people actually fail, and this is because of impulse control. The three successful common traits among, or the, the three common traits among successful people is that, look, they have superior, superiority complex, which is they think they're better than everyone else and can do bigger things. Two is crippling insecurity of not being enough. Three is impulse control, you know, staying focused. So they know where they want to go. They have a way to drive to not be a failure and they stay focused on, on it because of impulse control. The biggest reason why people can't make money is because they can't wait 12 months. This is what he says all the time. Alex, look at a bunch of his videos. He always says this. Because most people, you know, can't sacrifice local benefits versus global. They are not willing to sacrifice temporary, you know, pain for success. Like, look, for example, local benefit, you know, is make the ask fast. So, make, you know, make, <laughs> make the money fast versus the global benefit, which is the longer you wait, you know, the bigger it can be. So, the more money you're going to make. Here's the last thing he said, which was, you know, speaking from strength. You know, share your experiences to add to the body of knowledge, right? Kind of going back to how to versus, you know, why you should or whatever. So teaching on principles is difficult until you have achieved a material amount in a field because there are others who will teach it with more depth of experience. So talking about something you haven't done before, look, if somebody else achieved that thing and talks about it, they're going to have way more authority and respect than you. 
but no one can question what you have done. That's why you should always talk about what you did. And if you have, and if you have done nothing, do something first and then talk about it. So that's mainly what I got from this entire 50 minute video. And it looks like it's at 20 minutes. So I don't know. You might as well go watch Alex's full video. So yeah. Anyways, you guys hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you want this document, let me, let me know in the comments and I can put it in my description. Peace.